Uh, hi, my name is Brian Walker with EMC, and I'm going to talk to you today about PCI compliance. PCI compliance is a set of standards that were developed by the payment card industry, PCI, uh, back in the early 2000s. Uh, each of them had their own set of standards uh, and back in December of 2004 they all came together uh, to create a uh, one common set of standard, standards, PCI DSS or data security standards. So PCI defines a set of standards um, for an environment that handles any kind of credit card transactions. Uh, you know, that you have a secure network, that you're protecting data uh, as it sits in rest or as it's out in flight, um, vulnerability assessments, uh, monitoring and reporting of the environment, uh, and, and the PCI standards define what those environments look like. Now, a lot of people ask themselves, do I need PCI compliance? And really, if you if you process any kind of credit card transactions, you do need some level of PCI compliance. There are certain levels of PCI compliance depending upon the number of transactions that you intake in each month and how you take in that data and how you store that data and really who's doing the credit card transaction. Uh, if, if you're doing it yourself, you are held, held to a higher set of standards than if you were to offload that project or that part of your environment to a third party credit card processor. When you look to become PCI compliant, uh, basically what happens is a QSA or a qualified security assessor comes into your environment and kind of takes an overall look at the environment, how you are restricting access, how you're handling that, that PII or personal identifiable information to ensure that it follows PCI standards. To deploy a PCI environment or a PCI approved environment, there are certain pieces of a puzzle that need to be in place to meet those requirements. Again, it varies depending upon how many transactions you're taking in, how you're storing that data, and, and your QSA, your auditor can tell you how you need to have your environment look to meet that certain level that you're trying to reach. Some common pieces of the puzzle, though, that really apply for everybody is you've got to have a firewall. It's pretty standard nowadays. Uh, there really aren't too many environments out there without a firewall. You're going to have a firewall and it's going to be restricted. You're not going to have it open. Uh, it's, it's going to be restricted based on the traffic that you're taking in. And a lot of times what folks will do is cut that link, that public access link to the database server so only web servers can speak with that, uh, that particular server. Segmentation is a big piece. And what that essentially means is that your web servers reside on a different network than your database server. And that's all done uh, with, with VLANs on, on the firewall. Um, and it basically prevents public access coming in off of your web server and then accessing your, your, your database server through any kind of exploits. And again, there's, you know, th this is just kind of a, a 30,000 foot overview of, of what the environment would look like but essentially it's, it's locked down between uh, environments and you're only opening up certain ports and certain access to only certain servers. Another piece of the puzzle is some kind of intrusion detection or intrusion prevention device. What this does is it sits in line and it monitors all traffic coming in and out of your network to see if there are any kind of signatures or any kind of malicious activity, uh, be it a virus or some kind of, of backdoor trojan or really anything. Uh, and many IDS and IPS devices can provide you a report to let you know what the overall health of the environment is, how it relates to PCI compliance, and any kind of, of threats or vulnerabilities that you may have seen um, or that the device may have seen uh, at some point in time. And a lot of the times you, you provide this to your auditor and it meets, you know, I'd say five out of the six you know, requirements uh, you know, at, at a given time. Another area that needs addressing is, is the actual data itself and how you protect that data. Um, uh, you know, EMC offers um, you know, data at rest encryption on its Symmetrix VMAX lines. Uh, there's also you know, host-based encryption. There's a suite of RSA tools uh, that can uh, provide that in-flight encryption, um, 
you know, secure ID with user access control, and uh, as, as well as uh, our partnership with Brocade where we can provide uh, you know, the, the infrastructure and the fabric that provides that level of encryption as it's in flight. So how does EMC and PCI compliance kind of come together? Uh, EMC uh, is involved uh, in, in, in PCI compliance uh, in, in many ways. Uh, RSA is an EMC company and RSA offers a suite of tools that can really provide you the um, environment and the, the, the options needed for PCI compliance. File Security Manager, Key Manager, Secure ID, as I mentioned earlier, with the two-factor authentication. Uh, EMC also offers a uh, readiness assessment uh, for an environment that's, that's going to become PCI compliant. And it, essentially, it, it, it looks at the overall environment and says, okay, you, know, you need to address A, B, C, and D. Um, and in addition to that, it provides you some tools or options to remedy those specific situations so you can uh, you know, pass your security on it. Um, in regards to uh, the data itself, um, again, there, there are, are areas that need to be addressed as it relates to data retention and how you're disposing of data as you no longer need it. And EMC offers a data erasure service uh, where, uh, you know, it, it meets DOD standards and, and uh, basically goes in there uh, on a chassis level or an individual drive level uh, and securely erases that data so nothing can be retrieved off of that particular uh, hard drive or, or uh, you know, SAN or storage device. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the Symmetrix VMAX has data and rest encryption. Uh, the the uh, chassis itself just kind of really manages it for you. You don't have to worry about um, you know, making sure that you've got keys here, keys there, and you've, you, know, you're, you're, you, you just basically let that encryption happen on the device itself. Some of the main differences between uh, PCI compliance in a traditional managed hosting or dedicated environment and an environment in the cloud, uh, it really depends on how you're implementing your application. Um, there are a lot of PCI auditors out there that really quite don't understand the cloud and, and multi-tenancy and the security within a multi-tenant environment. So in, in your, your managed hosting environments, it's pretty straightforward. You, you need A, B, C, and D. In the cloud-hosted environment, it's a little different, and what a lot of folks do is, is they will configure an application to use a third-party gateway such as Authorize.net uh, or Square or, or any, any of the other uh, payment processors where essentially when your transaction comes in and you sell them your widget, that credit card information is then passed off to a third party like Authorize who handles the credit card authentication, and they've really got to worry about the PCI compliance more than you do. Uh, really, all it boils down to at that point is, is if your data that you're, be, that you're sending out is encrypted, and that's generally uh, satisfied by HTTPS encryption. Thanks for watching. Uh, my name is Brian Walker. I am a CloudU contributor, and I'll see you on campus.